Okay, so being a positive man, uh, first off, I want to ask your sexual orientation. I'm gay. You're gay? Okay. Um, being a gay positive male, what kind of discrimination do you feel like you get the most? I think that um, in my life and experience, um, being a, a black, gay, positive male, I have had to uh, endure some uh, different types of discriminations. And I think just because of, not because of me per se as a person, but just because of the, the condition that I have. And I think a lot of times in life, people don't see past a, condi a condition that you know a person has and, and instead of you know people seeing me as a a, a decent person a, a, a hard-working person a, a, a loving person they saw me as a condition that uh, in their minds the condition was associated with um, um, a person with moral failure um, uh, uh, some sort of diseased emaciated person um, uh, I've, I've, I've had to endure that. What do you think that people, either a large group of people or an organization can do on a large scale, big, think big here, what can they do to help people in the AIDS community? I think, I think something that could be done, and this is uh, just like off the top of my head right now, and it's something that I do not actually know that it's ever been done, but I think if there was some sort of 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 serious community wide um, embracing of of people that have uh, been infected and affected by HIV and AIDS, I think that would be a very very significant gesture to one show the pe the the positive infected people that you know the rest of the community is is coming to embrace and I think that's what that's what it that that's something like that is what it'll take it, it'll have to take a, a broad community type thing to to show people and and I think once we start getting to a place of of, of acceptance and being comfortable because you know no matter what you know people might like to think about you know HIV or or if they want to keep it hidden or hushed up it we're we're not going away you know we're not going anywhere and I think that I I really believe that if we can if we can get some sort of movement where everybody's on board and not just you know the positive person or not just but everybody come together and 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 just embrace one another I know that's kind of old hippie ish but. I, I really, I really believe that if 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 everybody comes together and makes a statement, and you know that statement is that we'll embrace, you know, our people, no matter what your background, what your condition is, and I, I think that's what it'll take. And I know that's probably overly simplistic to think, but I think sometimes the most simplest uh, gestures that that people can do will have the most powerful and lasting impact. The most you know. significance. Mm -hmm. What can I or any one person just themselves do to help the AIDS community as a whole or even just to help an individual? I think that it'll take it'll take just just that uh, a consciousness for every person to to keep in mind what can we do for the people. And what can I do for that person that, you know, may be struggling? And I think, you know, when you when you kind of get a sense of, you know, each person makes up the the whole, and you know, you you just gotta take that one, you know, moment when you might be able to embrace, you know, someone that, you know, is struggling, or or you might be able to take that one moment to, you know, inform somebody that you you know, might hear making ignorant, ignorant comments or remarks, um, you know, take that moment to say something and, and let them know, you know, uh, about, you know, the, the trueness of this condition. And I think, you know, if we, if we keep a conscious mind of, you know, reaching, 
you know, each person and, and one person and, and, you know, whoever we might come in contact with, however, it'll, it'll you know, transcend into the, the bigger picture and then that's when the the community will change their mindset is, is when, it, when it starts with the person. You know, it starts with each and every person and with you changing your mind and then you come into contact with somebody else and you help them change their mind, they're going to help somebody else change their mind and it, it, it's a, uh, what, a snowball effect. What kind of sexual education was there for you growing up or for other kids your age growing up, if at all any? Well, sex education when I was growing up was practically non-existent. Um, I remember the old film projectors where, that had the two reels on it. Uh, they really didn't say much. Um, they really didn't give us a lot of, of, of insight as far as, you know, what's really out there, you know, when you become sexually active. And I think that is that that denial of, of the reality of how things really are is what has perpetuated the, the, the soaring STD numbers. Um, it, it's, I don't understand why they, they have this fear of actually talking about it. They don't, uh, I think if, um, if we start letting it be visible in the schools and that way the, the kids will get to know that, you know, it's out there and it's not just something that you hear uh, Magic Johnson, you know, a, a, a far off celebrity or anything, you know, it's it's right here. And I think if we, you know, make that awareness come alive in the minds of young people, then it'll help them to start making better decisions that'll protect themselves. Do you really believe that our kids nowadays will ever really be properly educated? in sexual health on STDs and about what really happens after you're sexually active and what's really out there and what can really happen? I'd like to believe so. I I like to believe that there are other in individuals out there besides myself that that actually cares that, you know, that actually cares to let, you know, young people know that there's more, you know, out there. It's not just the soda pop and gumballs and you know everything like that in life but you know I think other people you know care enough to let children know that there are you know consequences you know to actions and there are consequences to your inactions and if we if we keep if we just keep letting uh, people know that's 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 the whole thing is is just just not getting out of this this habit of denial and just, you know, putting it out there. Um, I think in, in our society, uh, particular with how ready all the information is and, and how advanced, you know, young people are, young people are more advanced than what I was when I was growing up because of the readiness of information, the availability of it. But it still seems like with all the information, the we're not the older generations aren't conveying to the young people what actually happens. It's, it's not enough just to, you know, give children a brochure and say, you know, these things are out there, but they need to see the reality of it. They need to see that, you know, some of the scary things can get you if you, if you, if you don't protect yourself. Do you think that with the ready availableness of the internet, kids, say my age, 17 to 19 years old, should really know more about HIV and AIDS? Uh, I would like to think so because I mean there's the the way information is now but you know information being out there doesn't mean you know so much as if it if it's not made you know alive in, in you know people's mind and if it's not drilled in. Um, I think that's one uh, one benefit of you know coming up when I did sometimes certain you know things of information were just like drilled in and it's like we had no choice you know not to know you know there was no excuse but I think you know for whatever reason this fear you know that I think a lot of times people think if we don't talk about it then then we'll be protected or if we if we don't know about it then it, it can't get us in and I think that 
sort of fear of it is what keeps keeps things in in the uh, uh, in the way that we don't want, uh, basically. Um, I, I I just think if if we we've got to just keep you know letting the children know if we um, just show them. Um, I've uh, one of the earliest times that I remember. Uh, dealing with like first getting started with going around to some of the different groups and, and learning about you know the different people uh, I had a few people that in my mind they looked scary they looked scary because of the because of what I perceived HIV and AIDS to be and what you know so much of mainstream always presented HIV and AIDS to be and actually you know, seeing that and seeing, you know, different people that, you know, had the scary look and, you know, I'm not going to describe the scary look, but the scary look where you know that, you know, something's wrong, you know, I had a chance to see that and, and, and hear, you know, some of the, the, the troubles and, and things that they were facing and, and dealing with and it, um, it's like I said, how come, how come I couldn't have known this or known about this in a way that, you know, wasn't, you know, scary for me to talk about or scary for me to, to deal with other other than just like showing a picture and saying, this will this will get you, you know, and it's like, you know, come on now, we've, we've got to, you know, open up the dialogue and, you know, let, let, let young people actually get a chance to talk to people. I think that's what the one uh, problem it has been is, um, Nobody's expected to like actually educate and inform, but it's like they show a picture or show some uh, media clips of this, and then that's supposed to be enough. And and I I, I just do not think that's enough. It's going to take open dialogue and 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 you know everybody coming to the table and you know just putting it out there. And I think that's what that's what'll do the job. So, what are your views on the Hershey Milton School scandal, we can call it. Um, the Hershey Milton School in Hershey, Pennsylvania is not allowing admittance to a 13-year-old boy because he was born with AIDS. What, what, what do you see this as? What, how does that make you feel? That situation, uh, that angers me in a way that I wish that there was something that I could do directly to affect that um, that situation. It um, it angers me that one an educational institution, which should be a beacon of light, a beacon of tolerance, a beacon of of embracing for any and everybody, for them to display such such blatant ignorance. Ignorance. Oh, that that really that upsets me. Um, <clears throat> I think I think that um, what we need nowadays is we need to start getting mobilized about these things that 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 are just strikes against us. You know, that's a, a very very uh, bold strike against you know people that are positive and and not just a pro but a child a child who was born with it discriminatory against him when it was of not of his own free not will not of his own volition to to become nobody i think there are some but nobody in their right mind just wants tries to become to get oh i think i'll become positive to no this is a child that was born that way and and for this this administration for I'm appalled. I'm I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted, and I will not eat Hershey products until something has changed. That that's terrible, and and to make a child, you know, feel unwanted and unloved because of something that they clearly cannot help. And taking away an opportunity, an opportunity for a young boy, based on something he was born with, is also appalling. Yeah. I think. I think if if we if we we have to get angry enough 
to put the pressure on on these 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 schools, these administrations, on 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 the people that think they have the power. The power is really within the people. The I think there's no quote that said that uh, governments shouldn't be a people shouldn't be afraid of their governments and and I go as far as to say any administration uh, or or leadership for that matter is the they should be afraid of the people because it it's gonna fall on us to to make to force these entities to make these changes and and we as a people you know no matter where what background you're from black white you know gay straight positive or negative we need to raise our hand and our voice and let these people know that no this is not acceptable and we the people have the right to say no we are not going to accept this and we we will stop it and that's what it's going to take it's going to take us to get just outraged and mad to put an end to these types of treatments and and to send the message that's the problem is the message isn't being sent all across the board that we won't accept this and and once once we get angry enough I think then it'll it'll happen, but it, it's going to take the people rising up. That's what it's going to take.